We need, need each other, other and, and we need you. you. You're invited. And you're always welcome in East Lake. And Philip, I'm really thankful for the song I picked for our Christmas series. Philip James oh. Oswald. Knock on my door for a while. Hey, don't yep. Hi, June. Hey, June. Yep. We're wrapping up, baby. I'm going to be singing all these songs. So in this Christmas series that's coming up that starts this Sunday, each serve each um, Sunday is based, not, well, it's based off of scripture, but it's got a, a song. What, how do we say this? It's based on songs of the season. Mm -hmm. So Mar the Mary, did, yeah, Mary, did you know, is one of them. And then Michelle picked my least favorite of all Christmas songs, but I'm sure it's going to make for a great sermon. But we three kings, if anybody out there enjoys like, ooh, what's going to put me in the Christmas spirit? We three kings. If that's you, I need to meet you because I've never heard anybody that's like, oh, I can't wait to crank we three kings. Let's turn it up. Turn up we three kings. Can you put a little more bass in that? It might not be. East Lake Community Church is an intentional, multicultural community empowered by the Holy Spirit. We passionately pursue a loving relationship with God and everyone Jesus was sent to die for, here, near, and far. Where's he going? To get some Rex Quando. His closet looks different than mine. Jogging how, how bad is my background? Because, like, my house is a disaster. Michelle, your background looks like your house is a disaster. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It looks fine. Is it okay? I got junk yeah. over my shoulder, but are those probably books, just... books you're reading? Uh, those are planners. So I could show you the stack of books in my bedroom. They're higher than a small child. Are you? Uh, is that a train on top of your door frame? Uh -oh. No, that's not a train. That is an old thing. That is a cat's meow village. Do you know what those are? Oh, I think I've heard of that. They were probably popular in the 80s or something, you know? Anyway, but the reason I have them is because they're all of my hometown. That's why I have them. Why okay. are you laughing at me? Rob has the Rex Quando. Uh -oh. I, I need to change my view. I'm missing something. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Oh, Rob, will you do just a karate kick real quick in those? Just <laughs> yeah. nope. He will fall over. I can't I'll wear my boat for Pedro shirt too, but I've got my Uncle Rico sweater. Your oh, Uncle God. Rico sweater. Okay. Yeah, Michelle, you don't want to watch yeah, that movie. It's not rated. Oh, okay. I thought that we, yeah. we were talking about a person. So that tells you what I know. Let me tell you something before we get serious here for a minute. I did not understand Napoleon Dynamite in its fullness until I moved to Washington State and then went on several mission trips to northern Idaho. I understand Napoleon Dynamite now. Northern Idaho. <laughs> that's Evidently, I don't. Because that's where it's filmed. Yeah. And I, get, I get those people now. Here, let's, uh, I don't want to distract the whole time. <laughs> oh, it's not distracting for you to take that off while we're sitting here talking. Right, <laughs> right. Here we go. I'm just I glad there was something on underneath it. I still yeah, have no kidding. Pants. I still have the Rex Kondo pants on, though. Maybe I'll wear them back to the church. I would love to ride my motorcycle with those pants on. Just okay. let, just let the people know. What, what, are, you let, what are you letting them know? With that that? I live in America. <laughs> hang on. Let's see. Hang on. Where he's like, you don't have the Rex Quando pants. Yeah, I do. So. Uh, I have the best. Yeah. Can't find it. Well, guys, it's been a long time since we've gathered in this place. Well, it has been. That's why I came so big at the beginning. <laughs> it's been a long time. It's been a long time. He came in with the, the shirt and the pants. Well, so since we got together, the last thing, let's see, what has happened since we got together? We've done Thanksgiving, right? 
what else? How long has it been? Like three or four weeks? Did Michigan beat Ohio State in a beatdown? Wow. Yeah. Columbia, or what are we called? U.S. U.S. Of USC. By one point. Beat Clemson. Beat Clemson. We oh, did really beat Tennessee since we've been here. Yep. That's sure. right. We uh, took the Cowboys. The on Thanksgiving, yeah. yeah. You can't steal my joy. We toured the Cowboys Stadium. Down Ohio. Yes. We've been to Mosaics. No, we did yeah. one since Mosaics, haven't we? No. 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 No, it's been a long run. There's been like a three week uh, marathon yeah. going on. I, I think they thought we were dead. I think they thought we were dead too. Which, <laughs> by the way, did you guys see that I posted for just a short amount of time and then I felt bad? But the day that the Cowboys played on Thanksgiving, I posted my picture. And then I started getting messages and I felt so bad that I took it down. I was like, I can't do this. What's I, wrong with posting your picture? There's evidently something more to that than just posting was, your picture. Yeah, it was a picture of me in the Cowboys stadium, but it made it look as oh. if I was there that day. Okay. Because I didn't post that we had been there. So a lot of my friends online that are not from here did not know. Yeah. The, okay. I, I get it they, now. Yeah, they're like messaging me. So, I can't believe you're there today. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm living a lie. I got to come clean. Uh oh. So I took it down because I was also scrolling and seeing everybody's like heartfelt gratitude posts. And here I am acting a fool. Dude, did you see what I posted? I posted, you don't want to look at my day. What'd you do? Yeah, Chuck oh. Vembered it. Chuck, I Chuck Vembered it. Oh, okay. Is that over yet? Uh, tomorrow. See, Chuck Bember is all of November. Oh, okay, okay. One more, one more coming later today. Do you like pre-plan these all year? How does this work? I have a whole. I have a. I have a notebook, <laughs> and I order them out. And y'all think that I had a notebook that was a little weird. All well, I can Bember. say is Chuck Bember, and I took it up a notch because I went on TikTok, and I put them on TikTok with music whenever I could. I really um, have the game. Man, that, that's an investment. All you know, right. we're, we're pretty unique. Yeah. Pretty weird group of people. We are. But yeah. we're not dead, even if you heard we were. Yeah. And we're not what? Dead. Dead. No, we're not dead. Philip, no. where are you? I'm in my room. Okay. I'm like, yeah. we have not seen the view from here okay yeah. oh that's your family antique piece that's very cool yep that was me and Kristen. it's uh yeah it's a family antique piece and it has our it was built on our anniversary just like 100 years earlier 717 oh, wow. it's got it handwritten in there that's so cool yeah okay. and there's my my hats your hats some more hats i like hats yeah yep that's the deal this is so Ray, you you've maybe I should have done that too. You kind of muted out your background. <laughs> For the same reasons you said, yes. You yeah. said a war zone. <laughs> this is kind of weird because I have a mirror right there. So yeah. Oh yeah, now I can see you moving in the mirror. I knew there was something because there's a fireplace, right? There's a fireplace in your room. Yeah, that's right here. Yeah. Well, I think that is very cool. Do you build <laughs> fires in the fireplace? Oh yeah, all the time. Go to sleep with Very the fire cool. all the time. That would be awesome. I would oh, yeah. love that. Yeah, it's a special. It, it really is fun. By the way, if anyone needs firewood, I got a lot. Is it cut? No. <laughs> okay. Because I said to Kristen, I'm like, oh, Philip said he's going to bring me some firewood. She said, Michelle, it's still big trees laying in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> But to be fair, that I'll, was like six, eight weeks ago. So you yeah, could have it by now. I got you. I got you. I can. I can okay, I'm not I, out yet. I'm good. I'm I'm cutting on it, cutting it on an as needed basis. So you know. Okay. If I well, cut, I still oh, have I would... some, and I I have figured out that if I'm doing a Bible class as opposed to some other class at seminary, that I have no time to build a fire. Yeah, no fire being built. No fires. Yeah. All right, guys, so the world wants to know. Actually, they might not. I don't know. But I want to know, 
what is there anything that stood out to you guys this thanksgiving that you were the most grateful for did anything this is anything that you were just like i stinking love this part of life was there anything that was just over overly resounding within your grateful hearts you ungrateful people no 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 so many um for me is it's been a really sweet season with my with my son specifically over the last six seven days including thanksgiving at a house filled with people my son laid down on me and stuff Uh, oh in front of like 15 witnesses (laughs) a teenage boy that that is a rare occurrence 17 coming up next week wow let it let it go man wow that's crazy only only parents that have children that are grown or have left the nest will get this i was just grateful to be able to talk to all my kids Mm -hmm. yeah especially when you don't have the opportunity i mean even trey has said thanksgiving was weird not being here with us and so you know i was grateful for that and um i was grateful for an opportunity that Sean and i got to deliver some meals to some individuals in downtown columbia an organization um we're dispersing people with, in concert with Columbia Police Department to deliver meals to people that um, were either in poverty or they just lived alone. Mm. And they didn't have, you know, maybe they were connected to a church. And and so somebody made a lot of food, put them into uh, to, to go containers, and we took bags and delivered it to um some home so i was grateful to be able to do that i love to serve on the holidays that's cool that's cool yeah i was grateful uh to have my kids with me that's always something to be grateful for so um that was good we cooked lots of good food that's cool well mine was uh well i had a whole bunch but one of them was nathan's birthdays right before thanksgiving each year And me and Nathan, if you guys know, we've been fishing a few times and we don't really catch anything. It's kind of become a joke. Like we're kind of giving up hope, but we go out anyways. And this last time we went out fishing and I mean, Nathan brought in this hog of a fish. This sucker was huge. So, so big that like, I thought he grabbed a log. Like I was like, dude, there's no fish on the end of that thing. His rod was bent all the way over. And then this thing comes out like Shekinah glory. <laughs> Press, belly flops, it goes back in. I'm like, this is amazing. So it was fun. But um, just, you know, laughter. And that's not really the most grateful thing in my life. But that was one of them. We just had a lot of good times with family. And uh, yeah, it matters. Kristen made us, um, she fought to get us to New Mexico to be with family that she said, this is important. And, uh, and, you know, I'm kind of like, I don't know, more planes and everything. But when we got there, it was important and it, and it was fun. So I was glad we did it. It was good. Good. It was good. Okay, guys. So we're in the we're in a new series, but before we do it, we're going to talk about this series that we just finished up. Twenty one days of thankfulness, and mm-hmm. Ray was in the hot seat this last Sunday preaching. And um, word on the streets is he he picked on me in one of the services. I don't know if it was in one or both services. Was it in both? Both. I yeah. don't, I, I, oh. I watched one of the services and I never I didn't see it. I still haven't seen it. But um, anyways, I'll get him back. It's fine. Whatever. It was great. It was great. It was good. He's coming at me. He's coming at me. I'm happy to see him coming at somebody else. Yeah. But this this sermon really was on um, Samaritan with leprosy. And um, it, it was interesting. There was a lot of really good points in here. A lot of people don't think about this Samaritan. I don't feel like, at least I don't usually think of this. Yeah. So, um, 
I love this story. There's a few pieces of it that stood out to me whenever I was listening to this that I just wanted to kind of bring up and us discuss. And so, you know, you guys kind of just freestyle with me. But the first one that really struck me was what you had to do when you had leprosy, like the whole like that you had to declare that you were unclean, like basically get away from like, what was that whole process? Like what explain that for people who don't understand? Yeah, according to Leviticus, what they would have to do is, first of all, they would have to tear their clothes to to show that they were disheveled or something was wrong with them. They were to leave their hair down. So just imagine whether you being a male, your hair just bedhead. Just imagine perpetual bedhead. Um, they were also... Um, was to get out of camp because they lived in camp communities. And so when you had leprosy, you had to get out of camp because it was, at the time, highly contagious. Um, you also had to yell out. And if ever people were around or you saw people coming, you had to yell out that you were unclean mm -hmm. to give them fair warning not to interact or intersect with you and and yeah so that's I mean, crazy you, you couldn't go to church uh, unless you were cleansed of it and that was a rarity that someone was cleansed by it cleansed from it and so yeah it was it was not good news to find out you had leprosy and you got it through bacteria and, and actually that's how you get leprosy but they thought it was because of sin <laughs> So on, on, on top of having leprosy, you're also stuck alone, cast out. Yeah. Sorry, mm -hmm. Rob, what were you going to say? Oh, and, and you actually, it's some, uh, that's, that's a good segue there. And you're having to declare the worst thing about you verbally, nonstop, which begins to degrade your own self-worth almost immediately. Yeah. 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 I, when you said that, I couldn't help but think, what if our sins were exposed like what if there was just a note card right above our heads and everybody had to you know and not, i'm not saying right. leprosy was their sin but that concept of like being so vulnerable and there's nothing you can do mm -hmm. wow i can't imagine having to to call out and the people scattering from you and yeah. you know what that would do to your self-esteem that was probably not in the best place to begin with yeah yeah and so really what we're going to do moving forward is we're going to give everybody note cards on sundays and they're going to write their sins down and <laughs> so hey one of my mentors woman pastor uh -huh. was preaching on a sunday morning and god <laughs> revealed people's sins to her while she was preaching like oh. and she's like i don't want to know this why that would be and like this is a trustworthy person you know like we we had i mean it, she's not strange or out there or you know yeah so wow. it would be horrible yeah yeah be horrible wow <laughs> Well, the reality is, is that all of us have things that make us unclean and, and so many, so many things that, that people, you know, truths that, that nobody knows when they come into church. And one of the hardest things with church is we act as if we have it all together mm. when really what God's called us to do is to not, and to act like God has it all together and we don't. And so I don't know. I, I just will say that it seems kind of obvious to me, but especially if you're new to church, I think it's important for you to hear that when you come to church, don't feel like you have to clean up or you have to be somebody because the churches should be the place where you feel most safe to be your most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, culture and society, we just don't do that well, but Jesus meets us where we're at. Okay. Um, and that's the beauty of it. So anyways, which is what we're going to talk about even more. So after that, so basically you set this stuff up, Ray, about um, the uncleanliness and the leprosy. And then so Jesus heals them, heals 
heals multiple people. Am I correct in this? So all 10, ten, all 10 of them, all 10 of these people get healed and, and cured, but it's, is it they're healed while they're leaving or is it like an instant? So he says you're healed as you go. Yes. As they are leaving him to go to the priest, which is what he told him, told them to do. They are being healed in the moment as they are going which it's takes like faith the, to go right yeah i just thought that was really interesting and then and then the most interesting thing is only one of them returns to acknowledge the and to say thank you and to, mm -hmm. to praise god to give god glory for it i mean dude so 10 people get healed they mm -hmm. all go about their merry way only one out of 10 comes back mm. and when you said that and, and i've read that i've heard this story and i've read it myself but when you said that i just couldn't help but think how many things in my life has god given me that the longer they're around the more i think i acquired or more i think mm. it was me that did that <laughs> i don't know if you guys ever do that but i yeah. I, I mean i'm very prone to do that and so, I mean, what, do you guys have any thoughts on like what, how to not do that? Like how to stay in a state of gratitude? Is there anything that's worked for you or any way that you can say, I, I, this is how I remember what God has done. Um, help us. Cause I'm sure a lot of people do this. Many years ago, my mom started a, uh, I would say a Thanksgiving practice that because because she cooked so much food and it was so many people that would come over to her house when we would all gather she would ask us to hold hands and before we got ready to have thanksgiving the thanksgiving meal you have to verbalize now if you were above the age of five you had to participate in this you had to verbalize at least one thing why you were thankful and so if you could imagine being in a circle of 25 or 30 people and having to wait for everybody to say their thing. And, you, you know, there are some people that are really shy and they'll say one thing and they'll move on. And then you have people <laughs> that didn't get the memo. They got to bring a sermon. <laughs> because it's, I mean, the food is ready to eat. Yeah. And, and they are going into a dissertation regarding why they are grateful. But Sherlin did it here on, um, on Thursday. It was only like nine of us here and um, they were ready to eat. And I said, well, let's pray. And Sherlin said, oh, not before we hear from everybody why they are thankful. Ooh. And so that's one way of grounding us in gratitude. Uh-huh. I make my family do that too. They roll their eyes at me, but <laughs> we have our little dried kernels of corn we pass around. You have to actually come up with five things that you are thankful for. Ooh, right? five, yeah. Michelle up in the ante. Well, <laughs> supposedly when the Puritans were here during the first winter, you know, they ended up only having rations of five kernels of corn a day a piece. Now, I have not been able to verify that, so I will say the legend of, um, <laughs> but it's widely told, and so we've used that over the years. So you got to come up with five things. Wow, that's good. You know what I would be grateful for, although I do like that, and we did not do that at the Friendsgiving wrap, but we spent a lot of time talking about it here at home, because mm -hmm. when you talk about what you're grateful for, it becomes the focus of what you get to when things get rough. So. Mm -hmm. When you've talked about what you're grateful for enough, you remember it even when you might not want to. Mm -hmm. I would be grateful for the person who knows that the turkey's an hour out and says, hey, let's gather around and talk about what we're grateful for so that when the turkey comes out, we can all eat. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you got to do. You got to start <laughs> before you bring the hot food to the table. The hot food stays hot. Yeah. <laughs> the turkey's going to away. We do ours while we're eating. That way we're not holding it up and it gives us good you know, talking there, points. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta like plan that. There's an hour yeah. left turkey, everybody gather around. 
Ray's family does it like a real pastor family where you got to sit and wait and listen to the sermon. Practice Everybody just hold That's up. Right. Everyone just hold up. I got something to I say. I didn't start it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, Philip, uh, this reminded me. So I was looking this up to see if I could find this verse because, uh, you know, you're talking about this made me think this has always been a problem. So in Deuteronomy 8, God is talking to his people um, about, you know, them coming into the promised land and they're going to eat and be satisfied and build fine houses and your flocks will grow and your silver and gold will increase. Then your heart will become proud and you will forget the Lord, your God brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And it drops down and says, you might say in your heart, the power and strength of my hands have made this wealth for me. But remember yeah that it is the Lord your God who gives you power to gain wealth. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I so, mean, it, it, and isn't it like numerous, I mean, in every instance, and don't forget the Lord your God, don't have idols. I mean, it's like this whole concept continues to recur throughout the scripture and throughout our lives. One of the things that we do, and I did this out of necessity with my children, is I'll do like grounding. I call it grounding where anything you have to, it could be the silverware in your hand. You have to follow it back to how that came to be. That cup, oh, wow. that cup you're drinking out of where, where, where did that hamburger on your plate come from? Well, Ooh. so-and-so went to work, hmm. somebody, um, you know, somebody gave or whatever and it's funny when you trace something back in your life let's anything it just reminds you of the long string of occurrences that got you to where you were at and that yep. ultimately started with god providing yes my kids made me do that because they forget which you means i do too i just do the adult version of forgetting as you were talking i was thinking like I think I'm going to do a challenge for 2023. And, and that challenge will be to post on something, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, every day, something that I'm grateful for. Mm. Because I've seen people do it uh, for the month of November. Yeah. And, and that's cool. Um, but you don't see it throughout the year. A lot of other things seem to percolate to the top, mm -hmm. but there's politics depending on what time of year it is, whether it's the ending of school for other people. But I wonder if, I mean, I think that I'm gonna challenge myself um, to post something every day that I'm grateful for. And, and part of this is birth out of that 21 days of cultivating a heart of gratitude, mm -hmm. because one of the things that it also challenges you to do is you're not always posting stuff that's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're, you're learning to thank God for everything. Mm -hmm. and so that means some of the posts might be, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm sick. Mm -hmm. So that I yeah, might I know as a healer. Mm -hmm. Have you ever, have you ever not, go ahead, Rob. Have you ever been sick and halfway, like the, you're, you're 12 hours into being sick? And you really, truly become grateful because you realize it's the first time you've slowed down in, say, three months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think God was like, okay, look, I tried to get you to take a day off. I tried to get you to put your feet up. So I gave you a fever. Mm -hmm. So our friend, our friend Tracy Brown used to post every day something she, she was sure thankful did. for. It always, always encouraged me and amazed me. Mm-hmm. Every yeah, day. you can still go back and see that too. That accounts there. If you look up mm -hmm. Tracy Brown, hundreds of days, yeah. hundreds of days of gratitude. Oh, yeah, I, I just, it is just so easy for me to see. And, and I'm not saying that um, things and monetary things are the only thing we can be grateful for, but it's so easy for me to, to live my life and forget and, and almost like live as if I did this. Mm -hmm. And I know I didn't, but like, it's just, I mean, our natural inclination all do. is to self. <clears throat> and so in this situation in scripture, only one out of 10 came back and, yeah. uh, and God honored that and blessed him. And um, yeah, wait, about Jesus, 
in that that I really do like. And, 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 it's, and he does it in such a gentle but real way. He doesn't let the other nine off the hook. Sometimes I think we feel like, how are you being so mean to people calling them out? He, he called them out. He didn't, he didn't unheal them. I mean, he didn't send them back to their position. But he's kind of, why did one of them only come back here? Or the other mm -hmm. nine? Mm -hmm. In second service, I think it was, maybe it was first, I don't know. You said, oh, here comes snarky Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm yeah. 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 <laughs> well, maybe... Go ahead, Ray. I interrupt you. I mean, he has permission to be whatever he wants to be. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the very fact that he's the healer, he can ask, weren't there nine? I mean, were there 10 of you? Where are the other nine? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's well within his rights to ask that question. And I, I like that, Rob. He didn't unheal them. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he easily could have. Because, they, it, it, I mean, at least in this instant, it doesn't appear that they're grateful. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> not. Right? I mean, how, many, how many times have you done things, let's just say for your kids, and they didn't say thank you? Uh-oh. Too many. <laughs> so magnify that, since we're going to go with what with, with the text says and Philip keeps bringing up. Imagine if 90% of the human beings that you created, that you mm. provided for, that you cover, that you allow them to say whatever they want to say to other created beings, and they can't say thank you to you, mm -hmm. how would you feel if you were God? And that was your creation. Mm -hmm. Right. And also on the parenting side, like how good does it feel when one of your kids do genuinely say thank you? Isn't it one of the best feelings to just know that they see and recognize what you've done? Yes. And it's not that you do it for the recognition, but it sure is nice. And that's what, that's what worship is. That that's what, that's what giving God glory is. It's acknowledging God for who he is and putting him in his right place. Wow. Well, and it shows, it shows maturity. When mm -hmm. your child is old enough to recognize that you've done something good for them, or they have a reason to be appreciative of you, they are gaining in maturity. And the same mm -hmm. thing is true with believers if all as we are doing is complaining about everything, it says so much more about us than it does about God. Yep. It shows a lack of maturity. Yep. Um, I was really grateful. I, was it this morning or yesterday morning that we did the, um, we had to write down our complaints. It must have been this morning. Um, I was up in the middle of the night because I was a little overwhelmed. I had several things happen this week that I'm just like, I just felt like it, things are coming at me. And so they had you list your complaints. They wanted three. I did more. Um, but then <laughs> there was the uh, yeah. Michelle's the like, oh, finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but then God really transformed my heart about them, you know? Like, okay, I'm really upset about I have to do X, Y, Z, but you know, you don't know what the outcome of that's going to be yet. And maybe it's going to be better. And why are you not assuming that your heavenly father who loves you will not work it all out for your good? I mean, it was just a really ex good exercise to admit that I had things that were bothering me that I could have complained about, but in taking them to God, he was able to give me peace. And I eventually then was able to go back to sleep. Yeah. Ooh. That's good. Yeah. It's like that, that one, I, when I came to that one, which might've been a couple of days ago for me, I, I was like, I was like, I've trained for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this is what I've been training for. <laughs> Got my complaints out. Yeah. I, uh, Something cool that maybe our listeners could do is take note of your prayers. How many of your prayers are requests? And when they're answered, you move on to the next request. Is it is it like a task list for God? Or how much of your prayer time is spent back in praise for all the answered prayers? 
you know, I mean, because that's a great way to know, am I one of the 99% (laughs) Mm -hmm. or am I one of the ones that came back and gave glory to God? Because a lot of times God answers our prayers and we wait, we wait. It's not on my time. We complain, we complain. He finally answers our prayer. Maybe a quick praise like, hey, God answered my prayer, but we're on to the next. (laughs) What is that? What is happening? <laughs> Who was that? Wasn't me. That's awesome. That, that was. Me. I think it's what me. It... What in the world? It could it's be that... me. I, I did have a web page open that says San Francisco will allow police to deploy robots that kill. <laughs> Bro, whatever that, that sounds was. like the appropriate music. I thought we were being hacked. I don't know. I did too. I'm doing. like, whoa. I know. It oh, wasn't, was but I don't show any music going on on this page, but a friend sent me a link about San Francisco deploying robots. Oh my gosh, can we just, that was awesome. <laughs> That was weird. I, I was a little afraid because have you ever had a Zoom room broken into by somebody? Yeah, yep. I have. Early on, early on in youth group, when we were first in that, in the early days of the pandemic, we got some stuff. We dropped that. Yeah, bye-bye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Yeah. Well, just to change the subject back, just if, <laughs> another left turn. If you guys, some of you guys listening um, struggle with this, another thing you could do is take some of the blessings in your life, trace them back to where they came from, which will ultimately be God. But for instance, one of the things that I realized the other day, um, I love getting to live where I live in my house. But back when me and Kristen first got married, when I traced it all the way back, there was a member of our church, his sister passed away from cancer of some type she had a home that they inherited and he sold the house to me and Kristen at a discounted less than it should have been and we did not have the money for a down payment and somehow he worked it out and sold it to us for an extremely fair deal and got us into owning a home Mm. home ownership all the way back to that which then goes back to the blessing of that guy then that God the way God worked through him and it's just like you don't drive your car, don't live under your roof, don't pull food mm-hmm. from your fridge without realizing where that started. Mm-hmm. The long string of, of blessings and gra- gratitude you can have. Mm-hmm. Usually grateful people that end up causing things for you to be grateful for is what yeah. I want. Not selfish mm-hmm. people that are giving us gifts like that. Like I think of Art Supply, the guy that saw Jenny and I dating and knew that I needed to get down and see her because we were separated over the summer before we were going to get married in December and I didn't have any money. And the man shows up, asks me one question, leaves. It was the weirdest thing I've ever heard. He asked me a question about when I was available in the summertime. And I'm thinking he wants me to come chuck, you know, chuck wood with him. And I said, well, I could, I'd be available anytime this two weeks. I can get time off. How many days? And he's like, well, five or six. And I said, okay, he leaves. And he literally walks back in an hour and a half later with a plane ticket for me to Jacksonville, Florida to see Jenny. Oh, Oh, wow. That's cool. I'm like, that's cool. But Art was a guy that gave and gave and gave. Like when we needed wood for our wood stove, because we burned a lot of wood in Vermont, he was the one that would call and have us come up and take wood off his property. So what could have cost us thousands of dollars cost us nothing but our time. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. We get sick, Neil would show up at the house. Grateful people hold yeah. things more loosely. Yeah. yeah. Grateful people about- are probably more generous. I agree. Because it's, it's not like mine, I've acquired. It's like hey, everything's a gift. Pass it on. Wow. That's cool. So one of the things, this is kind of a left turn, but we'll just discuss a few more things. But one of the things that you said in passing quickly, Ray, that I did not know is you've been in a leper camp. Yeah. Did you say that? You gotta, yeah. you gotta tell me more about this. Yeah. Um, so in 2020, right before the pandemic, I was over in Southeast Asia 
and we were uh, we were asked to pay a visit to this leper camp. And the point and purpose was we uh, this this pastor that was in this camp um, wanted us to come and help them give out uh, food, which they had these giant bags of rice. And um, he also figured since he had some Americans in his country that he would also ask for uh, someone to bring the word of God. And so um, I got to preach at this leper camp and it was about 40 people. And what was really cool about it, if I could call it cool, was the interesting thing is that everybody in the camp was missing something. And so it humbled, it humbled me. You, mm. There were no, it, you felt like you were in a place where there was no hierarchy <laughs> because somebody might be missing a whole foot. Somebody might be missing their nose, but all the same, they all came, they worshiped together. Um, they ate together and, and, um, <clears throat> they had wanted us to eat on the platform. When, when I say platform, imagine that like in, um, engage the stage, the stage, that platform. Okay. And so they wanted the guests to eat up there and let the people eat on the floor because we were serving them. And I was like, no, I'm gonna sit right here next to, um, this, this woman who had no digits on her hand. She had a hand, but no digits. And we sat and ate next to each other. And then when it was over, when it was time for us to hand out food for, for people, um, there were certain people that were like, can you pray for me? And so, you know, imagine holding hands with somebody that didn't have one or someone holding your face with one finger, because that's all they had, you know, because they were looking at you as you prayed for them. And so it, it was really cool. I never thought that I would come in contact with something that I've read in scripture that would actually be around in our, in the today's age, because I mean, leprosy is something that is highly curable. Um, and it's, it's all about when you catch it. And so these individuals are far down the line. And so, yeah, they could be healed from it, but those digits don't come back. Those mm -hmm. limbs don't come back. Those nerve yeah. endings don't grow back. Right. So. Wow. So really. it's from a bacteria, you said. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not passed through touch or because you so said in the Bible, how, they had to call out unclean, but there you are sitting, sharing a meal, which I think is wonderful. But like, how do you do that and know you don't get leprosy? Yeah. So, so it was two things about it. Okay. Remember in that day and age, they didn't have the medicine we had now. And mm -hmm. so therefore it was just quarantine, get away. Okay. The reality is, um, leprosy is spread through, uh, bloodborne pathogens. It can be spread that way. Um, it also can be spread through mucus. And, and so unlike, because I, I was researching this uh, the last couple of weeks. So you remember when COVID first began, they were talking about how highly contagious it was. And then we found out later that you would have to have face-to-face -face conversation for X amount of time. Well, with leprosy, uh -huh. they thought, and they still do feel this way when it comes to face-to-face -to -face contact, is that you you really have to exchange saliva or bodily fluids and you have to be in close proximity for more than 24 minutes and okay. close i mean we're talking face to face mm -hmm. and so with these individuals so i'm preaching so i'm not face to face with them all right but i, I didn't even know this name i didn't even care about it i was just humbled to be there and so i'm sitting next to them we're not swapping spit, not sharing blood. So I thought nothing of it. Now that I know what I know, I probably still will not behave any differently than what I did the last time I was there in 2020. So, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. Well, yeah. I, I don't know what it's like to be a leper, but I do know that when I came back from COVID, from having COVID, it was weird to see how people would relate to me because I yeah. didn't, I didn't hide it. I didn't, I just let people know, 
we even had somebody leave the church because they they were worried that I came back too soon and they left like they're gone still. And I, yeah. I mean, I was home for 10 days, <laughs> but, yeah. but that was just COVID. I can't imagine leprosy. It was the same. I remember that, Philip. I, and I remember thinking at the time, this is as close, unless, unless I ever got leprosy, as I was ever going to feel um, as close to how I could get the feeling of what the lepers in the Bible felt. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was out, if you remember, I was out for two and a half weeks because wow. I was really sick. And it took forever for me to get my energy back. But still on my first night back, there were people like, well, you shouldn't be here. Then I'm like, well, I followed all the protocols and I'm better, but I just remember being shunned almost, not by any of you guys, yeah. but by, by people that knew that I had had COVID, even though I was well outside of it. And I just remember, I couldn't have lived a life like these lepers did, mm -hmm. um, and survived very well because it's just, you feel, you said it earlier, Michelle, alone. And, right. and this is so amazing because here comes Jesus and he's kind of like, hey, get over here. Mm -hmm. There was a ton of shunning during COVID. Yeah. I mean, it, it just was. Yeah. And, and I, I would dare say there's still some going on. Mm -hmm. Well, Not you know, we didn't know what we were dealing with. And, you know, in the beginning, people were wiping off their shoes and wiping off their groceries. And, you know, and you go from that to, oh, you have to be face to face for a period of time. You know, I think everybody gets afraid when they don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's Good. crazy. Well, guys, we're going to wrap it up, but wow. let's just briefly talk about things coming up. Um, this Friday is what is it, Rob, this Friday? Jingle Jam. Jingle so Jam. The whole family. Yep. Everybody. What All time? the people. And it is uh, from 7, door, doors open at 7, right? 7? No, 6.30. 6.30, and we're done at 8. Yep, 6.30 to 8. I was thinking, yeah, we were just talking early, about another right? cool thing that's coming up. It starts at 7. Me and Laura earlier, so sorry about that. That's all right. So well, we have great Jingle Jam 2. What's that? I found out uh, Derwin Gray that was at Mosaics, they do Jingle Jam 2. Yeah, it's oh. probably the same one. I think they use orange, and we use orange. Okay. So we modified it, but we did. We stole the name. Didn't steal the name. We 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 bought the rights to use the name because we are orange people. Let me be clear about that. Um, but we we actually something you might not know. If y'all do y'all know Mindy, Mindy Judd at church, yep. you know, she wrote our Jingle Jam script front to back. Ooh. With Laura and I's review for some of the, the theology to help her get her back. It's phenomenal. Oh, that's awesome. very own that. East Lakers. Ooh. Nice. That's Take that, Derwin. Cool. Well, <laughs> you all have to come decorate a cookie because that's where I'm going to be. I have my team of ladies. We're going to oversee the cookie contest. I'm going to be at the hot chocolate station with flamethrowers toasting marshmallows. Very cool. I'm actually not going to flamethrow them, but I'll be at the hot chocolate station. And I think you I'll should do, you are going to like roast your marshmallows with your little torch, right? I hope so. I'm planning on it. Yeah. I hope in a winter wonderland. Ah, anyway, <laughs> all right. Well, everybody, we're going to sign off and let you guys do something great tonight. So we'll see you later. We love all of you. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. East Lake Community Church is an intentional, multicultural community empowered by the Holy Spirit. We passionately pursue a loving relationship with God and everyone Jesus was sent to die for here.